There are many factors that go into your cloud gaming experience, but by far, input latency is one of the biggest. We've often been able to talk about our experience here when it comes to GFN's 3080 tier compared to a local and other cloud, but now with the Latency Display Analysis Tool, or LDAT, we can dive a little bit deeper and put some numbers behind that discussion. So let's go ahead and get started. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, don't forget to give a like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you know when new videos come out. Today we're taking a look at input latency for GeForce Now's 3080 tier. This will be at 1440p, both 60fps and 120fps. We'll start off by taking a look at how the LDAT works, for those of you who aren't familiar. We'll also compare a couple of games to my local PC, which will give us a great baseline of how input latency is looking for GeForce Now. We'll also take a look at performance of a few other games for GeForce Now and latency, and we'll take a look at control compared on Stadia GeForce Now and my local PC to see how that stacks up. So let's go ahead and get into it starting with the LDAT. So the LDAT or Latency Display Analysis tool from NVIDIA is a great device to accurately measure your input latency or click to pixel change on your monitor. This is really important for cloud gaming and something we really want to be able to take a look at. So it really comes down to in each game finding the best place that you want to use your sensor, the best area, and we're going to pick up something like your muzzle flash. So we'll position that where that's going to work out the best. And when you use the left mouse button, or in this case, the button on the LDAT itself, which will be used for auto fire or manual, the LDAT will compare the time difference between the exact moment that I press that button and the light change on the display. The LDAT software then shows the latency measurements in real time where I can see the averages, the highs, and the lows for the latency on every platform and in every game that I'm able to find a good testing scenario. This has been really great for cloud gaming and it's been able to show me exactly the things I've been feeling when I'm testing the 3080 tier. So let's move on to the games. So Destiny 2 and Apex Legends are two games that played extremely great for me back when I tested them on GFN's 3080 launch last year. So I was excited to get in and be able to take a look at some latency measurements. Now I am on 1 gig internet here and my trip delay is of 15 to 20 milliseconds and everything is done here at 1440p in this video. Looking at the results here, the click to pixel latency on each of these on average was fantastic. You can see in Destiny 2, 79.5 milliseconds for 60 hertz wasn't bad at all. But at 120, we got 59.7, which on average beat my local 60. And my local at 120 was 38.7. On Apex Legends, 71.5 at our 60 hertz, 46 milliseconds for 120. 46.8 for 60 on my local and 28.2 milliseconds for my 120. Apex Legends was definitely the best of the bunch when it came to testing the input latency. And there were times that I even got down into the high 30s when it came to the input latency at the 120 for GFN. And take a look at these side by side here. 46 for my average and 28.2 for my local. If you take account my round trip of latency, that pretty much means no additional latency on the server side. That's pretty insane, and these were great scores for Apex Legends. I'm still really surprised at how good that game feels, and I did have reflex technology enabled for both platforms. So let's go ahead and move on. Bright Memory, Crisis Remastered, and CSGO are three more games that I really wanted to take a look at the input latency, especially now that we have that kind of baseline reference idea from my PC comparison. CSGO got us 74 milliseconds on average at 60 hertz, which is really good. 120 hertz, we got 62.3, which wasn't too bad at all. And over on Crisis, 84.3 at 60 hertz and 55.9 at 120. On Bright Memory at 60 hertz, we got 83.6, very similar to Crisis. And at 120, 52.6. What this really showed me is at times when I've explained the 60 FPS gaming here on the PC to feel similar to a console, it makes sense because a lot of consoles will be around that 88 millisecond mark. But when it comes to the 120 FPS, testing has been really consistent and GFN has really fell in those 50s most of the time in most of the games. And that explains why the 120 FPS feels so much closer to local gaming and kind of brings that illusion to life as if you were playing on a machine next to you. That's not to say it's all perfect. Even on the 3080 at 60 or 120 FPS, you could have the occasional bitrate drop where pixelation comes in and then clears up, or you could get a micro stutter or some hitches or some things to kind of pull you out and remind you that you're not local gaming. 
But these things don't really happen that often for me, and I find the 3080 to still be one of the greatest experiences when it comes to cloud gaming. Why did you bring me here? Control's another game I was interested in taking a look at because this game's not as optimized as some of those other first-person or competitive shooters, and I expected higher latency. It's a good opportunity to take a game like this and look at Stadia GeForce Now on my local PC. On Stadia, we had 1440p, 60fps in the browser, and that got us 116.1 milliseconds. For GeForce Now at 60, we had 112.2, so about 4 milliseconds difference, but at 120, 74.7 milliseconds, and I immediately felt that when I switched to the 120, especially considering my local PC got us 66.6 milliseconds. Like I said, this game's not as optimized on the latency as others, but that's not even 10 milliseconds difference, and that brought me really close to feeling like I was playing locally on the GFN 3080. So I've known since launch that GFN's 3080 input latency was fantastic and some of the best that I've ever felt in cloud gaming, but it's been great to actually get some real numbers and information behind this. Now it only helps to validate what I've been saying since its launch that 60fps does feel a lot more like console gaming to me and there's nothing wrong with that when we're talking about cloud. And the 120fps feels much closer to my local PC than anything else I've experienced in cloud. Now it is cloud gaming and not everything is all perfect like I said and each person could wind up with a different experience while this is just a snapshot an idea of the performance that I was able to get with my setup here. But GFN 3080 continues to be to me the one to beat when it comes to cloud gaming for picture quality, graphics, and input latency. Alright guys, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video as always. If you haven't already, give a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell so you know when new videos come out. And don't forget to leave me your comment down below. Alright, thanks again for coming to watch and I'll see you in the next one.